What is going on, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. And on today's episode, very excited for you guys to get to listen to six foot six, 2022 prospect Justin Taylor of STAB uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, we get to talk about him, his game, his recruitment, uh, what Monday was like for him, uh, with the craziness going on with college coaches being able to uh, finally contact uh, who his game reminds of. Um, and all that type of stuff. Uh, very excited for you guys to get to listen, get to know Justin a little bit more as he's going to be a, a, a well-known name here moving forward. Um, but before we get into it, we ask that, that you go ahead, please uh, subscribe to this channel. Please go ahead and like this video, give it a thumbs up, and let us know in the comment section below who your favorite player in the state of Virginia is right now. The favorite high school player, state of Virginia, right now. Let us know in the comment section below after you subscribe, after you like this video. But without further ado, here is Justin Taylor on the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw. Thank you guys very much. going on everybody jamie shaw here the absolute basketball experience very excited for you today to have six foot six 2022 prospect justin taylor on the show with us justin how's it going doing well how are you man i'm doing good uh excited though got a little touch of basketball coming back uh went to an aau event last uh last week and stuff so it's almost some normalcy coming back into uh into this life mm -hmm. yeah definitely Finally. um so I wanted to start off here, even though it wasn't able to happen, what was it like when you got the call to be one of the 75 people who were invited to the USA minicamp uh, this year? Yeah, uh, it was definitely a tremendous honor. Um, it was definitely exciting for me because that's been definitely a goal of mine uh, for high school. So um, when I, my AU coach told me that, I was definitely super excited. Uh, and obviously it's disappointing for it to be canceled, but – I'm um, just hoping that they're able to reschedule sometime in October or whenever they're able to. So um, definitely hoping we're able to go there soon. No doubt. And then you've kind of been on the radar for a while now. I mean, you know, CP3 Rising Car uh, Stars Camp invite. You had the Hoop Group All-American Camp and all that type of stuff. But what does it mean to you? What does it feel like to you whenever guys like the guys at therivals.com uh, publicly call you a player in the 2022 class who could be a big name nationally. Humbling, like hearing all those higher scouts uh, say I'm one of the best in my class in the nation. So um, it's definitely cool to hear that. But at the end of the day, like rankings don't really matter to a lot of people. So it's all about how you play when you go on the court. And uh, you got to still be able to show your game because at the end of the day, rankings don't really mean that much. And then last Monday, college coaches could uh, finally call the 2022 class uh, for the first time. Virginia Tech offered Sunday night for you, and then Bryant, Maryland, NC State, and St. Joe's all offered that day with uh, Butler mm -hmm. and Richmond coming after the fact. Um, what was that day? Take us through that day for you and what it was like. Yeah, so for Virginia Tech, they actually told my high school coach that they wanted to talk to me before, like, all the madness started um, on June 15th. So they offered me on June 14th to get, I guess, out of the way. Um, and then uh, on midnight, it was honestly crazier than I expected because I was expecting that many coaches to contact me at midnight. Um, and like you said, I got three of my offers at midnight from Maryland, Brian, and Joe. So that was definitely cool to see. Uh, it's definitely hard to sleep that night because I was so um, excited. But um, it was definitely a lot of fun hearing from all those coaches and being able to talk with them. And then you're kind of a noted hard worker and stuff. What does it feel like to kindly have this finally happen? These coaches calling you, these coaches offering you, and you, and you, you know, just getting that notoriety, which you so well earned. What's it kind of feel like to, to finally have that happening? 
yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. I mean, I've worked <laughs> basically my whole life for this, so it's definitely cool to see a lot of the hard work paying off, but um, it's still definitely early in the process, so still got ways to go. And what are these coaches telling you when they call you? What's the pitch they're giving you to try to start recruiting you and uh, end up at, your, at their school? Yeah, I mean, it's usually kind of different for each school, but um, I think there are, a lot of them are saying they love how versatile I am and um, how I can score the ball, I can play in multiple positions, stuff like that. So um, they want me to come in and make an impact right away. Um, and a lot of, as far as like Maryland and different places like that, NC State, it's closer to home. Um, so that's a lot of their pitch, but um, it's different for each school. And then obviously with this uptick in recruitment, it's in the middle of a quarantine. Uh, how have you been handling kind of the recruitment process during a quarantine? Yeah, um, it's definitely different because you're not able to, you know, play in front of coaches or take visits and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of them are just saying once this all pandemic does end, they want me to take visits, you know, right away and that they're excited to finally see me play in person for a lot of schools. And as you mentioned, there's kind of a ways to go with your recruitment and stuff. It's just getting started. But do you know kind of what you'll be looking for in a school at the next level, whether it be the program, the staff, the, the, the location, all that type of stuff? Yeah, um, for me, I think it's just uh, fit, being able to make impact right away as a freshman um, and then being able to connect with the coaches on and off the court because, you know, it's fine to have the coaches who can put you on the court, but being you know, have a personal relationship with them. It's just as important. And then um, the education side is just as important as the basketball aspect. So having both sides to the school. And then do you kind of have a time frame as when you're looking to kind of, you know, to go on visits, narrow things down, and then kind of, you know, go from there? Yeah. Um, I mean, I want to take visits as soon as this pandemic ends. But as far as making a decision or cutting my list, um, right now, I don't really have a time frame, to be honest. So um, we'll see in the future, though. Absolutely. And then also, I've read in a couple of places when I was doing research for this article and stuff, there's a lot of uh, talk about the possibility whenever Virginia offers that that's going to be the, the, the leader and stuff quite for you. Uh, I wanted to give you the opportunity. Do you want to address that at all? Do you want to say anything toward that? Yeah, I actually figured that question was going to be coming. But um, a lot of coaches I talk to always say, you know, you live 10 minutes away from uh, the defending national champions. Like, why would you come all the way here um, when you have that in your backyard? But I would just say that I lived in Charlotte my whole life. Um, so, I mean, I can see myself doing both things. I can see myself staying here and playing for my hometown or going somewhere else. So, um, my options are definitely open and it's not locked in on if I get the UA offer, I'll commit right away. It's definitely uh, my options are open and I'm excited to, you know, talk to all these different coaches and schools. Yeah, excited about the process. The process is awesome, too, so live it up every second of it. Um, for those who have yeah. never seen you play before, how would you describe your game, and then who have you heard that you play like? Um, I guess you describe my game as a versatile scorer. Um, I can, think I can score on all three levels. Um, obviously, my shooting is my best attribute, but I think I can score on all three levels and play multiple positions and defend the ball. Um, but I've also heard <laughs> – I watch Jason Tatum a lot, so I've heard that comparison, uh, Tyler Hero, uh, Devin Booker some. So those three guys I like to watch a lot and for comparisons too. And you train and play with, you know, noted uh, skill developer Damon Altizer and stuff. What's it like working with him? Yeah, so I've, <laughs> I've worked with him like for five-plus years now, and um, he's helped me tremendously on, I mean, on and off the court. But – as far as just um, developing my game, it's been incredible to work with him. Um, he's been able to change my game this past year. So he's been incredible because he's my high school coach and trainer. So I see him all the time. And then obviously with that trainer kind of close by that you have the relationship with, what have you been working on during this quarantine to, to, to better your game? Oh, um, yeah. Some things I've been working on is a lot is finishing at the rim, um, you know, finishing through contact or – floaters and different things like different things like that um as well as coming off ball screens and making plays like that but i would say a big emphasis is finishing through contact and um, finishing at the rim 
And it looks like we'll be getting back to AAU kind of here soon and have some semblance of a few weeks of AAU. What are you most looking forward to when getting back out there? Um, honestly, just playing. We haven't played, like, really in forever. So, um, being able to show my game to coaches and everything like that. So, um, I'm just excited to finally play again. And then looking forward to next season, what, what can we expect from Stab? Uh, I think we're going to be really good. We're going to be young, um, but we're going to be really good. We have me and then John St. Germain and Carl Lang, who are both rising sophomores, who are going to be really good in the future. Um, but I think we'll be special this year in these next two years to come. And then you personally, what are your goals, you know, that you're setting forth for yourself over the next year? Yeah, as a team, I want to win the state championship. Uh, we have two years to do it, so – that's a huge goal. Um, and individually, I want to continue to, you know, be all state um, and all that type of stuff. But mainly just to win a state championship. And then wrapping things up here, uh, let us know. Let the people know one thing about you that uh, may not be very well known publicly. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, I heard Angelo. He was talking about how he's good at ping pong, but I think I'm pretty good. So. Uh, I, I want to have that matchup against him. So you, you and Angela go go at ping pong. Who's winning best out of three? I think it's me. We need to play it. Is it going to be 2-0? Are you going to go 2-1? Or is it going to be a clean sweep? Uh, I, might, I might let him get one game in there, but I'm definitely getting a dub. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I love it. Good stuff. Well, is there anything that you want to leave uh, any, any college coaches or any Justin Taylor fans or any fans of basketball, anything that you want to leave them with? Um, I, don't, I mean, I'm just ready to – finally get back on the court I'd say and finally play absolutely man it's been great to uh see your development since middle school come all the way up to where you're at now and I can't wait to see what these next two years and then even beyond that bring for you thank y'all for tuning in the absolute basketball experience for Justin Taylor I am Jamie Shaw we'll see you next time